Hello everyone, I welcome you all to MSB lecture series on interpretive spectroscopy. So now I am discussing about UV visible spectroscopy. In my last couple of lectures, uh, I was discussing about Argel diagrams, combined Argel diagrams for two sets of uh, D electronic configurations. The first one was about D1, D4, D6, D9 for both octahedral and tetrahedral complexes. With one Argel diagram for high spin complexes, we should be able to interpret data obtained from the spectroscopy. And in the same way, another Argel diagram I showed you that is for D2, D3 and D7, D8 system for both octahedral and tetrahedral complexes combined together. And also we saw some anomalies, uh, energy of some transits are decreasing and the energy of some, some transits are increasing. How you can correct that one using Raka parameters considering nephil axitic effects. And now we will consider another unique electronic configuration D5. So spectra of D5 ions, high spin one. We have quite a few examples are there, manganese 2 complexes and iron 3 complexes are D5 system. And for example, if you say hexafluoromanganate 4 minus or hexaquamanganese 2 plus or hexafluoroferrate 3 minus all are having D5 electronic configuration and high spin complexes. And if you consider electronic rearrangement in these high spin complexes, and if you recall spin selection rule of delta S equals 0, these transients are forbidden because if any electron you promote, they will be going with upward spin, then you will be having two spins with the same spin value of plus half. In that case, it is not allowed. That is the reason they are all spin forbidden transitions. The ground term is 6s with 11 excited states here. So that means transition probabilities are extremely low. And here, in order to see transition from D5 system, that is from 6s to 4g, 4f, 4d, 4p, that involves the reversal of one spin. That means if I promote one of the electrons, it should go. That means it is basically reversal of one spin is essential to see the transition from this one to these four. On the other hand, in order to see transition to these seven levels, we need to reverse the spin of both the electrons. That is doubly spin formidable. So in this case, what happens? It is very weak. If you look into the spectrum, so this is how the spectrum looks like for hexaquamanganese 2 plus. So manganese 2 has a D5 high spin electronic configuration. All D orbits are occupied with one electron each. So none of the possible DD transition is spin allowed. Since for any transition, the spin of the electron must be reversed. Both higher energy EG orbits contain already one electron. According to Pauli's principle, the spin of the second electron must be reversed. So therefore, all possible transitions are very weak and hence hexa aqua manganese 2 plus is very, very pale in color. The bands are extremely weak that is reflected in its epsilon value of 0 0.2 to 0 0.03 liter per mole per centimeter. So allowed transitions, spin allowed bands are invariably broad. So you can see here, these are the transitions observed for hexa aqua manganese 2 plus. These arrows indicate the positions of the predicted band positions here. So now the Argel diagram, if you write for this unique D5 electronic configuration for both tetrahedral and octahedral, of course in case of tetrahedral, ignore G. Now one can write all possible with ground state being 6A1G and 6S is 6A1G. And now from 6A1G, uh, you can see about six transitions, the corresponding lambda maximum values are shown here. That's what I showed you in, in the spectrum here. This spectrum, you can identify those transitions shown here. So now let's come back to Rakha parameters. So Rakha parameters were generated as a means to describe the effect of electron-electron repulsion within the metal complexes. And the Rakha parameters are A, B, and C. In the case of Tanube-Sugunow diagrams, I will tell you what is 
Thanubia's Sugno diagrams. We learned about organ diagrams. We have another set of diagrams which are called Thanubia's Sugno diagrams. In the case of Thanubia's Sugno diagrams, each electron configuration split has an energy that can be related by the B value. A is ignored because it is roughly the same for any metal center and C generally approximately as being 1 by 4 times B. What B represents is an approximation of the bond strength between the ligand and the metal. So, comparisons between tabulated free ion B and B of a coordinated complex is called the nephilaxitic ratio, the effect of reducing electron electron repulsion via ligands that is beta equals uh, beta complex over beta free ion. Now, let us come back to uh, Tanube Sugano diagrams. So, Tanube Sugano diagrams are used in coordination chemistry to predict electromagnetic absorption of metal coordination compounds of both tetrahedral and octahedral complexes. And ground state is always taken as abscess, x axis or horizontal axis and provides a constant reference point. Other energy levels are plotted relative to this ground state, which is as same as x axis. The low spin terms, that is, states where the spin multiplicity is 2s plane is lower than the ground states are also included in this Tanube Sugano diagram, whereas those things are not considered in case of Argyle diagrams. In order to make the diagram general for different metal ions with the same electronic configuration and to allow for different ligands of different uh, ligand field strength, both of which affect dq, that is b and b prime, the axes are plotted in units of energy by b and dq by b. By doing this one, in one Tanube Sugano diagram, we can consider the entire band of uh, ligands we come across in the spectrochemical series. What is the difference between Tanube Sugano diagram and Argyle diagram is, different diagram is required for different electronic arrangement. That means, every electronic arrangement, you need a separate Tanube Sugano diagram. You need D1, a separate D2, separate D9, all D1 to D9 except D5, you need a separate Tanube Sugano diagram, but it includes all ligands having different ligand field strength. The axis in a Tanube Sugano diagram is in terms of crystal field splitting parameter 10 dq or delta octahedral scaled by the B Raka parameter. This the y axis in terms of the energy of electronic transition E scaled by B. So, diagrams for D4, D5, D6, D7 metal ions have a discontinuity in energies uh, as the ligand field is varied. The discontinuity shown with the vertical line represents complexes changing from high spin to low spin complexes. To the left of the line, metal complexes are high spin as the spin pairing energy is greater than that of the ligand field splitting. To the right of the line, metal complexes are low spin as the spin pairing energy is less than that of the ligand field energy. So, what you can do is take Tanube Sugano diagrams for each electronic configuration and then read this paragraph here and then observe, you can make out the, the differences how it looks like. So, you can understand in a better way. So, for example, here I have given for 6 D6 system, here D2 V3 plus no fundamental difference between strong and weak field ligands and D6 cobalt 3 plus if you can there is discontinuity at D 10 dq B equals 20. 10 dq by B equals 20. At this point, pairing of electron occurs. That means, basically we are moving from weak field to the strong field. As a result, what happens? Pairing starts. To the left, we have high spin complexes, weak field. To the right, we have low spin complexes, strong field ligand. So, that means, free ion ground state is 5D in the octahedral field. Now, singlet 1 I of high energy would be consists of these levels. So, here 1 A 1 G is very important. 1 A 1 G is very important here. Uh, this state is greatly stabilized by the ligands and drops rapidly in energy as ligand field strength increases. So, so A, 1, A 1 G is here, you can see 1 A 1 G and it, it drops here so, as we move from left to the right because they become low spin complex here, it is a high spin complex here. It crosses the ground state, 5 T 2 state and it becomes the ground state here, 5 T 2 G was here and then it goes up and then A 1 G what happens that becomes ground state here. For example, if you look into COF 63 minus high spin blue in color, one peak at 13,000 centimeter minus 1 and then if you look into this one, we have two transitions are there here, here we have two transitions here, 
that is 1a1g, 1a1g to 1t1g, so 1t1g here and the other one is 1a1g to 1t2g here, 1t2g here. So, these two transitions are there whereas, here we will see only one transition in case of COF63 minus. So, you can very nicely identify from this D6 Thermesogono diagram for D6 complexes such as hexafluorocobalt 3 minus and tris ethylene diamine cobalt 3 plus low spin complex which shows two transitions. So, now let us look into ligand to metal charge transfer transitions. For example, I have shown here in case of a tetrahedral complex, you can see here we have low energy field sigma orbital and low energy field pi orbital is there and then they cause this kind of low crystal crystallization energy because both the electrons when they are donated to the metal what happens the homonoma gap shrinks and then this is more destabilized. That is the reason most of the halide complexes are very reactive and we use them very conveniently for doing substitution reactions to replace with better ligands. For example, if you take chloro compounds and if you add water, it immediately forms hexa aqua compound or if you add ammonia, you can form hexa ammonia compound or we can use any other ligand to replace very quickly because reactivity is more in these cases and they are all labile complexes. Then this is about metal to ligand charge transfer transition. You can see here they have low energy field sigma orbital and high energy empty pi orbitals. Uh, examples as I mentioned it can be CO or PR3 or aromatic groups, unsaturated aromatic groups, double bond, triple bond compounds and also pyridines etc. So, here because of the T2G electrons this essentially N non-bonding orbits are T2G, they combine with uh, pi star to generate bonding and anti-bonding orbitals where these electrons will be coming and here due to this one the CFSC the homoloma gap increases and they are more stabilized. So, ligand to metal charge transfer transition have very large extension coefficients. So, you can see here how this metal and ligand presence would have an impact on ligand to metal transfer transition. For example, first row and second row and third row, how it varies, it increases steadily and you go from uh, 3D to 4D to 5D, the gap increases and the energy required is very high or it falls into lower wavelength. Okay. So, now uh, symmetry distortion one can see here, trans diethylene difluoro compound D3 ion distorted from octahedral to D4H, uh, tetragonal elongation is there when in tetragonal elongation what would happen is energy level of D3 ion as the symmetry of its environment changes from octahedral to tetragonal and you can see these different transitions because of the change in the point group from OH to T4H here. Now, let us look into a couple of problems here, uh, very simple problems. Explain why an electronic transition for a high spin is spin forbidden, but for cobalt 2 plus that is D7 is spin allowed. It is very simple, you have to identify the action state and the D system. So, in case of Mn, hexa aqua magnus 2 plus, it is a D5 system and uh, immediately after knowing you just write uh, the electronic configuration and splitting orbital crystal field uh, splitting diagram and put the electrons, you have all the 5 electrons are something like this high spin complex. So, it is spin forbidden, it is very easy. And then, but for cobalt, it is a D7 system. D7 system, you have again high spin complex. So, here it is allowed because these two electrons can easily go to EG level. Okay, so, this is spin allowed transition, it is very easy here. Okay, so, now let us look into what is the D n configuration spin multiplicity and term symbol of the ground state of titanium 3 plus and vanadium 3 plus. Okay, I have already given here. So, this titanium 3 plus is a D 1 system uh, plus 3 state D 1 system is there and then uh, vanadium is D 2, vanadium 3 plus means 3 D 3 4 S 2, it is a D 2 system, vanadium is D 2 system and then if it D 1 system well, you can write again you put one electron here. So, it is if you go for 
L value equals 0, 1, 2, 3, S, P, D. So, it is a 2, D is here. A spin multiplicity will be S equals half, 2 S plus 1 will be 2 into half plus 1, it is 2 D. So, 2 D is shown here. And similarly, if you go for vanadium D2 system, two electrons here. So, L equals 3, that means F and then S equals 1, therefore, 2 S plus 1 equals 3. So, this is 3. So, this is how the ground state term symbol uh, can spin multiplicity is 3 and 2 in this case and you can identify this how. So, all these things can be done easily provided you identify the action state uh, in the metal complex and then find out what electronic configuration is there and simply find out L value, S value and then J value if needed and then you should be able to write the term ground state term symbol. Now, the electronic spectrum of an aqueous solution of uh, tris ethylene diamine nickel 2 plus exhibits broad absorptions with lambda maximum uh, 325, 550 and 900 nanometer. First question is suggest assignments for the electronic transitions. The second one is which bands are in the visible region. Okay. So, for this one you can see here recollect the uh, orgel diagram for D2 system or D8 system, they are essentially same. And then if you recall where exactly it comes, you can see here three transitions will be there. And these three transitions you can always write here. And of course, here what happens, the energy of this one drops here and then it increases here if you consider like this. So, that does not matter here, that question is not asked, only you have to assign, uh, you should be able to assign once you identify the first ground term, ground state and then three other states, one due to P and uh, one due to, two due to F, excluding the ground state of F system. So, you should be able to do that one, which bands are in the visible region. So, 900 nanometer assigned to 3A G to 3 T 2 G and 550 is assigned to 3 A 2 G to 3 T 1 G and then 325 is assigned to 3 A 2 G to 3 T 1 G. So, this is how you can identify and assign the values. So, of the three absorptions in this one, which is closest to the UV end of the spectrum, does the notation 3T2G to 3A2G indicate an absorption or emission band? Why are the three transitions, spin allowed and upper tailored? These are the three questions you should work out. These questions I am posing to you people by just looking into the spectrum and then try to work out for these three questions. So, now one more uh, problem is here. Aqueous solution of hexa covanadium 3 plus shows absorptions at 17,200 uh, and 25,600 centimeter assigned to two transitions that is already given 3 T 1 G F to 3 T 2 G and then 3 T 1 G F to 3 T 1 G P transitions. Estimate values of B and delta O for hexa aqua vanadium compound. And then here, this is the compound given and then if you just look into here, the plot E versus B versus delta versus B. So, here the B is unknown, but if you take the ratio, what we get is E 2 over E 1, but if you consider E 2 over E 1 here, this comes around E 2 over E 1 ratio will be 1.49. In order to get that 1.49, you have to do trial points here. What you should do is you have to consider at different points for delta value with respect to this one considering the transition ground state as well as the excited state between which electronic transition is happening, but that means 3 T 1 G to 3 T 2 G and 3 T 1 G to 3 T 1 G P. You have to consider this keep on doing by trial. For example, you when uh, this value is 20, what would happen? So, then at this value, what is the E 2 by B and E 1 by B for these two levels between which electron transition is taking place? You can find out from the plot approximately and get the value here. And similarly, you make another trial considering 30 delta O over B equals 30 and then again at that value, you find out E 2 1 E from y axis and calculate these two values and get 1.46 and then one more trial you do it and you arrive at 
the one we found from the data. So, that means there is an approximate answer, but we are now be able to estimate B and delta R as follows. You can take here 29, we have in this one what we are getting is, is 40 and then E2 equals 25,600 and B equals 640 and then when you take 29 here, again E1 by B you can take it at 26.9 is there. Since E1 equals 17,200, B equals 640 centimeter inverse. So, substitution of the value of B into this one would give an estimate of delta, this is approximately 18,600 centimeter minus 1. This is how you should be able to do from this taking simply turn base of diagram. So, this shows how useful turn base of diagram from which by simply looking at the transition and comparing the value of E by B versus delta O by B and you can calculate delta O very easily for a given complex. Okay, so, let me stop here and come with more examples uh, maybe at the end. In my next lecture, I shall focus your attention on IR spectroscopy. After that one, I will go to mass spectrometry and then EPR and if time permits mass bar and then I would come back to uh, solve problems from all these spectroscopic methods uh, to make you very expert in elucidation and interpretation of the data. So, until then, see you until my next lecture.